The year is 2024, and 3D printers have finally become affordable. I feel like 3D printers were a hot topic item like 10 years ago, but they always had a high price tag, which meant average Joes like us could never afford them. But recently, I got my very own 3D printer for only 150 bucks. And I've been having an absolute ball printing all kinds of things. Some things for fun, and some things that are a bit more practical. However, my favorite thing has been solving very specific issues that are only possible thanks to 3D printing. And for us homebrewers, there seems to be an endless list of things around the brewery that need a very specific solution. So I decided to put together some of my absolute favorite 3D printed projects. A few of them more useful than others. Some I found online, some I made myself, and a few super cool ones that were sent to me by a fan of the channel. And hopefully you can start to get some ideas on how 3D printing can help you simplify, organize, or improve your brewing space. But before I get too ahead of myself, you might be saying, there's no way I'll ever buy a 3D printer, or that's still way too expensive, or sounds like too much work. And I totally hear you, but don't worry, I'm not gonna get super technical here. There are plenty of other 3D printing YouTubers that are way better at explaining things. My hope is for you to just start thinking of the possibilities. And actually, I do have a way you can 3D print without having to own a printer. In fact, this whole discovery of 3D printing for homebrewing started with this one issue that led me here today. Picture this, you finished up your brew day, took a gravity reading, and now you're cleaning up. But where do you put the hydrometer and flask to dry? You can't set it on the counter or it'll just roll away and explode into a million pieces. Well, the first simple solution was a drying rack for those. Sure, they sell them online, but who has 12 hydrometers? I just have one. Bruh. So I jumped online and I found this one on Thingiverse by James47889. It has a part to hold the hydrometer and the test tube so they can dry off. By the way, there are a ton of sites like Thingiverse, Printables, Thangs, which all have pre-designed files that you can download and print. So even if you have no design skills, have no fear. Somebody else might have already designed it. And by the way, I'll leave links to all these project files in the description if you're interested in trying one of them out. However, the issue was that I still didn't have a 3D printer. But did you know that many libraries in the US these days actually have one in their computer lab? Here in San Diego County, they have one that's for free use. And in other cities nearby, they have them too. But they often come with a fee based on print size. So check your local libraries. They might just have one collecting dust that you can use for any project you can think of. Anyway, I sent the file to the library and a few days later, I picked it up. And here it is. And as you can see, it does actually perfectly fit these two. And you can see it's angled so that the water kind of drips off. But of course, it's not perfect. And you can probably see some of the issues that I'm dealing with. So right here, there's like a little bit of like supports, which these things come off pretty easily. That's no big deal. But on this side, it looks like right here, there was like a melting issue or something. So it doesn't exactly sit flat. It kind of like wobbles a little bit. And that's one of the biggest problems with going with the library 3D printer is that they're doing everything for you. They're not sitting there monitoring and tweaking it though, if anything goes wrong. But it still works. I mean, technically it still holds these well. And I've been using this for several months, no issues. It does kind of make me a little nervous when it wobbles like that. But now I have my own 3D printer. So let's try printing our own. Those time lapses look awesome, but this actually took four hours to print. And I did take some liberties and make some adjustments to make it more my own. The new model is actually a little bit bigger and has longer legs here to kind of keep it more support. And then I kind of shortened these because they didn't need to be so long. But let's see how it works. Boom, and that is stable, no wobbling. And it has the perfect angle to kind of let things kind of dry off easily. I would say that's a success. Time to say goodbye to this one and on to the next. On a similar note, I've always been a bit annoyed whenever I lift up a bong and airlock from the fermenter and I have nowhere to put it. The airlocks can't stand up on their own and I hate to put a clean bung onto an unsanitized area. So this next print by Jay Runsvold is meant to help that. It perfectly fits two number seven bungs to keep them lifted so the bottoms don't touch. Clean bottoms, happy boy. I'm sure now your mind is starting to swirl with ideas, but I do want to make one caveat. There are a few different types of plastics you can print, and each have different qualities. PLA is the basic one that I'm using, and most libraries are probably using as well. It's inexpensive, technically biodegradable, and it works great for simple things that don't get exposed to extreme heat or UV, meaning they work best inside. Other plastics, like PETG, 
are more heat resistant for outdoor projects or things that might be close to hot surfaces, and actually are a bit more food safe since they are part PET, which is the same plastic used in a lot of brewing tools or even fermenters. However, because of the way 3D printers work, each line of melted plastic leaves little air gaps that can make a lovely home for bacteria. So really, no 3D print is fully food safe beyond single use. So if you do plan to print something like a cup to drink out of or a tool that will come in contact with your fermentation long term, just know that it's probably best to only use it once. Okay, how about some brew day related stuff? In the past, I've shown how I like to use chip clips or binder clips to hold the brew bag up during the mash. So why not print some of those? There's tons of designs. And since it'll be close to a hot pot, I think I'll use some PETG for this one. Shout out to SK River for this design. Ever need a little extra grip on your fermenter? Well, this plastic I used here is called TPU, and it's perfect for when you need something that is a little bit more flexible and gives some cushion. I found these bucket handle grips on Thingiverse and then printed them out. There was a little error while printing, so I ended up reprinting them and sizing them to perfectly fit this fermenter. And I love how the little grooves perfectly fit my fingers. Bottle your beer? How about this bottle drying rack by Husker 8.3? It prints all the parts and you just need to do some slight assembly. Okay, so I had to break this one up into a couple of different prints so I can print them all. So it's these three main parts here, which included this little 3D printed screw. So these all just kind of slide into each other. And then this screw goes in here, not too tight. And then check this out. So it's flat, but then folds out creates a little stand. Got some bottles here to test out. Might need to like kind of counterbalance the weight here so it doesn't fall over. But, oh, that's working. Sweet. Check it out, it fits all these different kinds of size bottles, which is cool. And my favorite part is that when you're done, it just folds down flat for easy storage. I mean, if you had a ton of bottles that you needed to dry, obviously this isn't enough. You'd have to print a couple, but I actually saw some other prints that are more modular that you can add onto and expand if you need to. But pretty nifty little print. Let's keep going. Let's try some prints for kegs. First off, shout out to Dr. Hans, who's done a few videos on 3D printed projects for kegs. Things like covers for posts or soda stream holders. Definitely check out those videos after this one. His videos really got me thinking more about this. And if you're interested in seeing me possibly collab with him sometime in the future, let me know in the comments. And Doc, if you're watching, hit me up. Okay, I recently made the switch fully to dual tight connectors for my kegs and gas lines, and I absolutely love the low profile and ease of use, but sometimes it can be kind of hard to get the tops off those quick connects to give them a good clean. Thankfully, this person made a dual tight ball lock tool that helps you get a grip and loosen that lid. So I was actually inspired by this, since it helped so much to loosen this lid, I had a similar issue with these growler kegs. They sometimes can be really hard to get these lids off. So I jumped into some design software and made this, taking a lot of the ideas from that Duotype tool and applying it to this. And it perfectly fits on and then helps loosen the lid. Pretty sweet. And of course, we can't go without talking about tap handles. There are nearly endless designs and options. Those are definitely some sweet designs, but this one has some next level tech. Subscriber Jeff Brown actually sent this idea that uses e-paper displays to mount onto a tap handle. If you've never heard of e-paper, you might recognize it from department or grocery stores. They've recently been adding these digital signs to help quickly change details without having to reprint every time a price changes. I honestly don't even know how they work, but from what I gather, they use NFC or near field communication to write a digital file onto the screen. So basically you can design your own label with whatever info you want. Load it onto your phone and then use an app called NFC eTag, apply it right to the e-paper in seconds. Then just print out one of these designs. I picked this one by Chaos. It required a few pieces of hardware. In fact, I had to stop the print midway so that I can embed some nuts for the screws. All right, what you just saw was this one actually being printed out, which despite it also having some issues, I really just didn't like how thick and bulky it was. So then I opted for design number two, which is thinner, but 
it just felt too large, too long. So then I went for one that was a little smaller profile, but this one actually has it mount on the outside, which makes it smaller, but I don't really like how this was exposed. In fact, I tried printing out a different a few different covers and stuff to cover it up, but it was just becoming way too bulky. So finally, I went back to this design and modified it to just be a little bit shorter. And the one thing I like about this is that unlike this version where you had to, where I had to stop the print to insert these nuts and the nut in the bottom, this design I like because it has a slot for this. It has little pins inside here to help register this, make sure it fits right. And the back that goes on here just needs one screw. And here's the final product. Got the nut on the bottom, I got the screw in the back. It's looking pretty good, let's get it installed. And let's see if it pours. It works, nice. This is seriously so cool. And you don't have to unscrew the tap to change the information. You just use the app again with a new image. The e-paper is a bit on the pricey side, but definitely has that wow factor. All right, next I wanna quickly talk about organization in the brewery. This one is really dependent on your situation, but you can get really creative here because you can 3D print any shape box or container you need. For example, in the closet where I have my fermenters was this blank wall that was unused space. So I printed out one of these pegboard systems. This one's called Multiboard by Keep Macon, but you might've seen the honeycomb walls on Instagram, very similar, and they're completely modular. So you can add hooks to hang things like tri clamps or hoses. And in drawers, you can make small boxes to keep things organized. This system is called Gridfinity, and it truly has infinite size boxes and ways to organize. This is just a drawer with some house supplies, but you get the idea. And if you really get into 3D printing and designing and take the time to learn some software, you can combine some other things on this list and add a mount to them and then add that to your organization wall. I made this one to hold spare airlocks using this model as a starting point. And here's one to hold my wrap pill hydrometers. Shout out again to Chaos for the original design that I adjusted for multi-board pegs. Organization to me is just so satisfying. So as you can see, the options are boundless, but I'm curious to know, what are some issues that you're having in your brewery that you think 3D printing can solve? Or just what are some other ideas of things that I can print? Maybe if there's enough of you that are actually interested in this, I'll do a follow up and I'll make some of the ideas that you come up with. But until then, I'm gonna keep printing weird things for my home brewery. But if you're looking for more tool-related brewing videos, then maybe check out this one. There's a bunch of good tips in there. And in fact, I might be able to 3D print some of those.